What should I type with it? I put uh, your testimony. I'll, I'll call it that. your testimony. And maybe a sort of an underscore your testimony has impact. Um, we're going to look at different examples of people in the New Testament. We're just going to go to two different books where their names are mentioned. But you probably wouldn't wouldn't remember them. Their name is sort of just mentioned in passing. And what I want to put on our minds is that realize that your testimony means so much to the, the body of Christ. And these people we're going to read about, you you may have remember seeing their name, you might not have, but how Paul talks about them, allow that to be you as well, right? Um, what we're going to read, think of your testimony and and want people to say a similar thing ab about you, is, is what I'm trying to bring out there. So Philippians chapter 4, if you could go there please. We're also going to see some of Paul's heart as he wrote, what kind of attitude Paul had his attitude to, towards brothers and sisters and saints and his attitude towards fellowship in general, you see right in this very first verse of Philippians 4 verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, my dearly beloved, isn't that wonderful? My dearly beloved, this is Paul's heart towards his brothers and sisters and when we think of our brothers and sisters in San Pedro or Georgia or Victoria or wherever around the world, we need to think of them like that, my dearly beloved, that there's, there's a bond between us that is so powerful by the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. And longed for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Paul's desire was to see his brother, to see his sister standing fast. And, and this is how we should view each other, that we're excited to see one another standing fast. And if someone's struggling in some way and they're walking the Lord, we can come alongside them and help them to stand fast. So verse 2, I beseech Eudias, I don't know if that's how to pronounce her name, it's actually a lady, and beseech Sintichi, another lady, that they may be of the same mind in the Lord. And so here's two names. You may, you may or may not have remembered that name. But these are two ladies who were helping Paul minister the gospel. They, they were involved in the church in some way doesn't say exactly what 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 they did but they were they were very important mem members of the body of Christ and obviously there was some kind of conflict as well right because he said be of the same mind you two and um, remember we're, we're we're all on the same team we've got to work together <clears throat> verse 3 and I entreat thee also true yoke fellow help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other, my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Apparently Clement there is a guy, he's a brother in the Lord, and, but he's also mentioning to help the women that are, that, are, that, are, that are in the Lord. That we've all got to be one mind together, <clears throat> realizing your names are written in the book of life. Pretty powerful. That's us. We've got to be of one mind. And when we see our brothers and sisters, that has to be our attitude. That we can't be thinking one's better than another or look at that person, oh, I don't like that person. And that's not in the body of Christ. If any of those kinds of thoughts come into our mind, we have to recognize, oh, this isn't coming from, from the Lord. This is from the enemy. And, and we fight against it. <clears throat> we fight against that, that way of thinking. And we're, we're of one mind together, wanting to rejoice together in the Lord. 
And I thought it's interesting as well that Paul's men mentioning women in the Lord, women having a having a, a very important place in the body of Christ. And we have to always remember that, that it's not just brothers having the, the dominant uh, position in the body. The scriptures say there's neither male nor female. We're all one together. Yes, we have different roles and, and different positions perhaps, but we're one together. And we see Jesus in His ministry. He's... He's reaching out to women. You think of the, the woman at the well. And at that time in society, women were, um, were, were not highly valued, sadly. But you see Jesus Christ, the Son of God, talking to this woman at the well, which is something that, that wasn't done. And He's honoring her to say, I have living waters. And if you knew who I was, you would have asked. And I would have given you living water. And you see time and time again, Jesus in his ministry showing that, that he values men and women in a, in a very special way. You think of the women caught in adultery, the Lord was there to forgive and, um, and to reach out to her and to say, neither do I forgive you. And so praise the Lord. Let's go to Colossians 4, please. Colossians chapter 4, just one book over. Colossians chapter 4, and go to verse 1. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. So now he's speaking to people in a position of, of being a master. They have pe people under them. And encouraging them to be fair, to be just, to not be overbearing. Probably in that society where they did have masters and slaves, it was very common for mas masters to be very overbearing and, and probably cruel at times to people underneath them. But Paul's reminding them, you're a brother in the Lord now. Your life's totally different. We, we must conduct ourselves in a way that's just, in a way that's equal, in a way that's fair. That we have a master in heaven that watches us at all times. And so we have to honor that. It's kind of like us at our work. We don't work just for our boss. We work for our master in heaven. And that helps us to do an even better job at work. Verse 2. Continue in prayer... And watch the same with thanksgiving. So here again, we're, here you see Paul's attitude. His attitude in prayer. His life was filled with prayer. Our life daily must be filled with prayer. And we must combine our prayer here. He's, he's, he's saying, as we pray, we're, we're in an attitude of watching. Watching our lives. Watching our brothers and sisters' lives. A state of watching the Lord's coming. I want to live in a way that honors the Lord, that pleases Him. I want to, I want to watch in, in the sense that, Lord, use me to preach Your gospel. So many ways that we watch in prayer. But we do it with thanksgiving. All the people say. Amen. Being thankful is a very powerful weapon we have. Just stopping and giving thanks is so powerful. And there's, there's been many times where, where I might be having a stressful day at work and things are tough and it's busy. And I just start saying, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just like we do at the meetings. Just saying, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. And then my mind changes. I and mean, I just feel, I feel the peace of the Lord moving upon me to say, all right, it's okay. I'm here. Nothing may have changed in my schedule. It might still be a real busy hectic day but I it's just the comforter the Holy Ghost comforter means to come alongside of to be an advocate I just feel the presence of the Lord come along beside me as if the Lord's putting his arm around me and saying okay we're going to fix this fridge if it's a fridge issue <laughs> and um, praise the Lord with thanksgiving 
Don't be afraid to just start giving thanks and see the power of the Lord move in that, situ that situation. It's like giving, giving thanks is opening the door to the Lord to come and help us because we're looking to Him only. <clears throat> Verse 3. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. I love that verse. The, he's writing to the church at Colossae saying, pray for us. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Pray for each other. Pray that each one of us, that God for each one of us would open up this door of utterance, would, would move upon us and and open a door so that we can speak the word of God to someone. That is just so powerful. We have this mystery within us. Are we thinking during the day? We hear a lot about starting our day in prayer. We hear it time and time again in the gifts. Do you realize that? The Lord tells us that in the gifts so much. Start your day with prayer. Start your day with the word. And oftentimes... We hear brothers and sisters say that they prayed for the Lord to, to use them that day to preach the gospel. And do we have that on our mind in the morning when you're praying, Lord, use me this day. Use my brothers and sisters. Open a door of utterance for them. It's like opening a door of adventure and excitement and wonder for my brothers and sisters this day. As, and help them to speak your mystery, Lord. How often we hear, oh, I, had to, I got the chance to speak the gospel to this person. And you just watch the person light up as, as, as they tell that story. And, or, or maybe it's a story of, I got to speak to this brother and sister about an issue they were going through. And, and, and it was really good. It was very helpful. And the, we connect and... And, and it really helped that first pers person. It's that same excitement. It's that same God opening a door of utterance to help someone. To help someone who maybe is in, in the Lord that needs help. Or in the world and lost. Pray for that door of utterance to open. I'll never forget. After I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Back in 1983. And I was just so excited. I think to myself, Lord, I don't want to lose that excitement. That excitement to, I picture myself at a bus stop in Australia, sitting there reading a Bible, and some person's beside me, I can't remember if it's a lady or a guy now, and I'm reading Mark 16, and I just put it in the person's lap and say, have you ever read this in the Bible before? And because I was just so excited to share what the Lord had done for me. I went back to Canada, my home, and... And I was thinking, what am I going to do? I've got all these friends, and I used to hang out with them at parties, and I used, to, I used to have parties at my house, and I realized I've got to make a stand. I've got to tell them. And they would say things like, when I wouldn't go to their parties, they, I'd hear, they'd say, well, what's Ward doing tonight? I've told you this, and they'd say, he's praying. <laughs> They're probably right. <laughs> um, but each time I spoke to them about the Lord, I just felt this power within me that, that I never experienced in my life. Like this, this power of, whoa, this feels so good, so peaceful, so strong, so, um, so filled with answers. I can remember before I came to the Lord, I didn't have answers. I didn't know what, what happened after I died. I didn't know what was right or wrong morally. And... Um, and, and, and these types of things. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm speaking His Word, and the Lord's filling me with His peace and comfort that I just wanted to keep speaking. A door of utterance. Lord, open this door. And Paul's saying this. Pray for me. Pray that God will open this door of utterance. And each one of us, I think I can say on behalf of each one of us, pray for me that a door of utterance might be opened tomorrow. Right? See what happens. Do keep praying. I know you do pray that, but it's a reminder. 
Sometimes I do forget. I'm sitting, I'm, I go for a walk with my dogs, and I'm thinking, and I'm praying as I'm walking. I think, oh, I haven't prayed. Lord, use me this day. And I go, oh, okay. And I start praying. So verse 4, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Paul's realizing, I, I must speak. I've got something to say. We've got a king who's alive, who conquered death, who's seated at the right hand of God, who desires to live in every man, woman, and child on planet Earth. We have these words, this mystery of Christ within us. And Paul's saying, i got to speak. But on one hand, it seems like he's saying, but I need your help. Can you pray for me? Because he was going through a lot too. He was actually in jail at this time as he's writing this. Verse 5. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time, making the most of every, every moment of our day. Let your speech be always with grace. Season with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Our speech should be filled with grace. If we've got too short a fuse and we get angry too quickly, we need to pray, Lord, lengthen that fuse. <laughs> make it long, Lord, make it long, so that I don't act in, in anger. And so that I, my words can be graceful. And if we're feeling angry, Lord, help us to control our speech so that we can still minister grace. And so now we get to a couple of other names here. Verse 7. All my, st all my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and a fellow servant in the Lord. Tychicus. That name might not jump out at you thinking about Tychicus. But this person is described as a beloved brother, a faithful minister, a fellow servant. That's us. Desire to be each one of those things to your brothers and your sisters and to, be, to people out there in the world. Um, verse 8. Whom I have sent unto you for the same pur purpose, that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts. Can we do that as well? When you're in fellowship, are we thinking, okay, here I am, I'm with brothers and sisters. I want to get to know my brothers and sisters. It's asking questions, it's caring, listening. It's enjoying being amongst the saints, finding out more than what's your favorite color, right? And it's getting to know that person. Showing them that you care about them. And it seems that Ty Tychicus was this type of a person. He wanted to, to know their estate. His desire was to comfort their hearts with the word of God, with testimonies. And we can all do this. We are all fully capable. All the people say. And I know we do. It's exciting to see. As, as Brother Dave was saying at camp. He saw the young people get together and talking one with another. And their words were... We're, we're good and encouraging and, and um, praise the Lord that was really exciting and okay so verse 9 with Onesimus a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you they shall make known unto you all things which are done here so sharing testimonies Onesimus with this guy Tychicus they were, they, they, they were sent to the saints there and they were sharing testimonies to encourage and, and help the saints on Onesimus you can read about in Philemon as well where Onesimus was the slave of Philemon that ran away and somehow he met up with Paul and he came to the Lord and Paul was telling him to go back that's another story that's interesting though that he's here verse 10 Aristarchus another guy here Aristarchus that'd be a long name to say if, you, if, if he was your kid Aristarchus Okay, sorry, off track. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye received commandments. If he, if he come unto you, receive him. So he's encouraging the saints, when brothers and sisters come, receive them, welcome them. Okay, go on here. Verse 11. And Jesus, Jesus, who is called just, Justice, who are of 
the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers under the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. And again, so here's this guy, just, Justice, and the others described as fellow workers in the kingdom of God. We have our jobs that we go to, and as you do it, stop yourself sometime during the day and say, wait a minute, I'm a worker in the kingdom of God here. It's not just me fixing a refrigerator. It's I want to be used by you, Lord, somehow to get your kingdom out to people around me. Epaphras, verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you. Now look at this guy's attitude. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. That's sort of a, I, I read that verse and it kind of challenges me to think when I pray, am I really praying fervently for my brothers and sisters? I want that answer to, to be yes. I want to be like Epaphras, a name we probably, you probably didn't think about much, but look at his attitude, praying fervently in prayers for the saints, desiring that they may stand perfect or complete, doesn't mean perfect as in no mistakes, it's perfect meaning being completed, they're growing in the things of God, wanting to overcome. As he prays, he's thinking, Lord, help them to stand Help them to stand in, in, in your complete will. An amazing attitude there. For I bear him record that he has a great zeal for you and for them that are at Laodicea and them in Hierapolis. Do we have a great zeal for brothers and sisters in the Lord? Do you? Ask yourself that question. If the answer is, well, maybe it's not as zealous as I want, just pray about it. Pray that the Lord would help that zeal to grow. And He will. And He'll, he'll help your appreciation for the saints to, to, to grow and to flourish. Verse 11. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Go quickly to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Luke there is the Luke that, that uh, wrote the book of Luke, most likely. But look about Demas here. We're reading about Demas, and he's, he seems to be strong in the Lord right there. But something happened in Demas' Demas's life. 2 Timothy 4.10, it says, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed to Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Demas here. In Colossians 4, he's spoken well of. Demas and Luke, they're greeting you. But something happened in Demas' life. He lost his zeal for the saints. He's lost, he lost his desire for the mystery of Christ. And that desire to have the doors open and to experience great adventures opened by the Lord for him. And sadly, he forsook Paul. He forsook the Lord, loving this world. That's where there, Demas is, is a warning to us. And not to go down that road. So back, go back to Colossians 4. And verse 17. We'll just 17, go there. And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Fulfill your ministry, each one of us. See the Lord saying those words to you. Take heed to your ministry you've received from Jesus Christ. Fulfill it. Fulfill your, your duty the Lord asks you to do every day. We're not going to be perfect. But every day we can desire to, to grow more and more to be like Him. And verse 18, the salutation of, by the hand of me, Paul. Remember my bonds. He's in prison. He's saying, so remember me. 
Grace be with you. Amen. Or so be it. So please just remember these testimonies. Try and think about your walk in the Lord. That if someone was writing about you, let's, let's desire some of those quali qualities to, to flourish and to grow. That we can stand fast. Have that desire for doors to be open. That we can um, have this zeal for the Lord. To be, to be the beloved of God. To desire to comfort and strengthen each other. All the people say. Amen. Okay, we'll leave it there. And we'll have a time of prayer if you have need.